Yeah, very, very impressive. Some people are saying that he's been the greatest 13 since Conrad Smith. <laughs> Coming up on The Wrap this week, we look back at the weekend's action. Sean Fitzpatrick tells us about some of his favorite All Blacks ever. Probably the greatest game by a 10 um, that you'd ever see. And two-time World Cup winner Conrad Smith dials in to give us his take on how the current New Zealand side are shaping up. Well, it's a sign of the times and the rugby world currently is still so unpredictable. New Zealand have canceled their home fixtures for the rest of the rugby championship due to government restrictions, which means the rest of the rugby championship is set to be taking place in Australia starting in September. Right, let's talk about the rugby that did take place this weekend. South Africa once again beating Argentina 29 points to 10. Who saw Cheslin Colby playing scrum half as well? Slightly out of his normal position, but mind you, you see them play 10 for Toulouse, kick and drop goals from 50 metres. One man who is consistent, not just in his selection and where he plays, but what he does on the pitch. Lucanio Am, who saw his try saving tackle? Now you see it. No, you don't. That guy's been absolutely phenomenal. No look pass to Mapimpi in 2019. Superb right across the British and Irish livestock, and his form just hasn't stopped. Surely got to be one of the main contenders for World Player of the Year. So whilst we wait for the Rugby Championship to come back onto our TV screens, we thought we'd check in with a couple of all-black legends. Between the three of us, we've won three World Cups. What? We'll hear from Conrad Smith shortly, but here now, Sean Fitzpatrick, who won the World Cup in 1987. I was only four. Hi, Hugo. Good to see you. My five, five greatest All Blacks of all time that I played with or I've watched. Golly gosh, that is um, really difficult because I played with so many great All Blacks over the years and, and I watched so many great All Blacks from the, the Sid Goings uh, to the Brian Williamses of the world to the Colin Meads, Brian Lahore. Um, just, just great players, but I, I suppose you know, in terms of players I played with, um, it's very hard to go past a, a Michael Jones. Oh, the seven black shirts there, Jones trying for Michael Jones. Uh, a John Kerr and a Grant Fox, um, and I always say this, and it's not because Zinni does the same for me. Um, the one player that I, I'd probably select above all others in terms of if I could pick one All Black. Um, to play with uh, would be Zin Zanbrook. Zin Zanbrook, he's trying a drop kick from a million miles out. What a goal! Uh, just purely he, he, his talent uh, was unbelievable, um, but I loved his passion for the jersey um, and, that, and that, that still continues. In terms of, of players, uh, current players or ish players that I've watched, um, I love watching Dan Carter. Uh, he influenced games. You know, players like Michael Jones and Zin Zan, they influence games, that's why I like them. Um, but I think of the modern era, uh, Dan Carter would be the one. You know, the game he played in 05 against the Lions in Wellington was probably the greatest game by a 10 um, that you'd ever see. So Dan Carter makes the top five. I think it's fair to say that the All Blacks have been pretty impressive so far in the Rugby Championship. They've racked up 90 points in the last two Bledisloe Cup matches. Service as usual. And a person that used to be able to deliver that kind of service and opportunity is Conrad Smith. One of the most consistent centres, I think, of his generation. A true world-class player. So, this week on The Wrap, we thought we'd give him a shout. Hi, mate. It's Hugo. Hey, man. This COVID backdrop has reared its ugly head once again, bang in the middle of the tournament, just has got a bit of momentum. How's that news been landed back home? Yeah, well, it's, it's all happened pretty pretty quickly and suddenly, so I understand Australia have been a little bit annoyed with the way things have played out. But to be honest, talking to the players, you know, they're, especially the, the All Black boys, they're faced with a huge stint away from home um, just because of the quarantine requirements coming back and that, spots booked for after the end of year tour but there's nothing in between so but that now they're facing the likelihood of going in Australia and being based there and, and then head up for the end of year tour and it'll still be a long way from home but that's that's what's going on at the moment. South Africa they had another good result of the weekend against Argentina and their centre of attention has been their informed centre Lucanio Am. In fact some people are saying that he's been the greatest 13 in world rugby since Conrad Smith. <laughs> so, of course, I'm sure you've been watching him and his progress, the World Cup and the Lions series and now this. What have you made of him? 
Yeah, very, very impressive. He's, um, I, I think that whole back line, I, I think they're benefiting from being a very settled combination. Like you talk about the World Cup, the Lions series, I think Dialande's, you know, another unsung player. He gets through a lot of work, not always flashy, but carries hard. He's still a really good distributor. And, you know, when you've got Colby, uh, LaRue, like all of these guys offering real threats around him. Um, but he's, he does his job, low error rate, very good, takes a lot of right options. Um, and, and he's, you know, he's a big part of that. That back line looking very slick. So hopefully, you know, we see some good games, you know, against uh, Australia and New Zealand in, in the weeks ahead. That's it. Um, let's talk New Zealand. Uh, two wins from two so far, this rugby championship. What have we learned from them? Uh, yeah, they, they were pretty impressive, you know, that, that last game. Uh, I think, again, um, they probably haven't been as settled in terms of, you know, their back line or um, their team in, in that World Cup. There have been a few changes, um, injury force, but some, you know, there's just good competition for some other positions. Um, but I, I think, you know, Aaron Smith, um, Richie Moanga, who's now settled at 10, uh, Leonard Brown, you know, if he comes back, he's slight injury, but um, David Havili, who's been a bit of a, um, a find at 12 this season, yeah, that, that's starting to show signs, you know, and, and I just think, um, yeah, that, that, that last game particularly was, was was a great result, a great performance, and um, I, I think they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll be pretty optimistic going and knowing, knowing that South Africa will be a much different challenge, but um, they, they've got a you know, pretty good team there. I love watching all black selection from the Northern Hemisphere because we see someone like Lau Mappe just not involved and you're like, how can you do that? The guy's on fire. Then Havili sets in, you're like, aha, that's why you can do that. You've just got this plethora of superstars, which forever creates the debate. It's a luxury, you know, for the all blacks. And that just, you know, it brings a real competitiveness to team training. You know, even if we're, we're talking about Richie Moanga, but you know, Bodie Barrett will be gunning for that position. And I still think um, Anton Leonard Brown will, will come back at 13 and that's, you know, no discredit to it. Um, I only, I, I think he played well towards the World Cup. I mean, Bird Hughes is still going to come back and he's, for me, the best 13 in the country. So. Got to throw him in somewhere and I don't know. <laughs> Ian Foster, he's come in. How do you think he's moved or taken this New Zealand team along their journey? You know, I, I know Fozzy, he's a great coach. You know, I, I think they're doing great things. The players I talk to are, you know, are happy. They, it was a little bit of a frustrating year last year, but for a number of reasons. But um, I think they're a lot more settled this year. and. And that's, you know, they were a new coaching group last year, so they probably needed a season together to get to know each other and, and deal with the pressures of um, coaching the All Blacks. OK, finally, the game that everyone wants to see, South Africa against New Zealand, uh, <laughs> which would just be monumental. You've got one team, world champions, just beat the Lions. We know that All Blacks will play expansive game of rugby. Almost a silly question to ask you, but how do you see that game going? <laughs> as good as you know the All Blacks were last week and I think they do know that this it'll be an entirely different um, game when they play South Africa J just the, the threats that they pose the the things that they won't do the strength they have at set piece it's just gonna as much as and as open as um, the All Blacks would like to see the game they know they won't all give them those opportunities and we also realise that South Africa, if a game opens up, they, they enjoy it. You know, they're not a one-dimensional team. They're, they're very good at that set piece, but they can play open rugby as good as anyone. Yeah, there'll be a great edge to, as always, when New Zealand play South Africa, but even more so because the, the wait's been so long. Yeah, it certainly has. We're all looking forward to it. Um, Conrad, thank you so much for joining us on The Wrap this week. Um, take care and look after yourself. Pleasure. OK, bye-bye. Bye. No, you can <laughs> Okay. So there you are. Conrad Smith, ladies and gentlemen. How about that? Sean Fitzpatrick, Conrad Smith, and a lot of rugby to look forward to. Well, that's it for us this week on The Wrap. We'll be back next Wednesday, all the usual places, World Rugby social media channels. Take care. Goodbye.